we have moved on to the home stretch and our last presenter. All right, this is our, our closer, if you will. This is Miss Linda Dallas. Yeah. She is. Yeah, look, we do it. Let's say some time. Now, Linda is an artist and an illustrator. She's also a professor of art at St. Augustine. Got that right here. Yeah. And she also works at the Raleigh Art Commission. Right. Wow. Now, what she wants to do is talk about a series of paintings that she's been working on, just based on the 12 days of Christmas. She did say appropriately unfinished, though, because we have yet to finish the 12 days of Christmas. So it just works out, right? Go. <laughs> so, my name is Linda Dallas, and I am a serial painter, okay? And I was asked, invited by uh, Benjamin Vineyard to participate in an exhibition where each artist was asked to interpret one of the 12 days of Christmas. And this was the painting that I did for the 12 days. Now, I had absolutely no interest in the song, The 12 Days of Christmas, but now I'm obsessed with it. <laughs> the Benjamin Vineyards no longer has the exhibit, but I'm still painting the 12 days of Christmas. So I paint with watercolor and gouache, and as you can see, my images are very patterned and very layered. And this has been an amazing journey. And each one, I'm getting more into it. So you might be interested in what Coco Cade is. These are the three French hens. And of course, Coco Cade is uh, what hens say in French. <laughs> and, and as I did research for this piece, I found a website that was all about what animals say in foreign languages. And uh, I don't know what they're feeding the Turkish chickens, but they say gada. <laughs> <laughs> now, when you're doing uh, paintings, like normal paintings, and then you're working on your 12-day obsession, you have to learn how to multitask. So I did this for Calling Birds painting, but then I incorporated it into a larger image uh, for Art on the Move. So you can see that the Art on the Move images are actually seven square compositions that fit together to create one long composition. And inside of that, there is actually four Calling Birds. Uh, the, there are many paintings in that that pre-existed that even th that idea of doing art on the moon. Now, for five days, because you can also tell from these paintings I'm obsessed with food, I decided to do, uh, uh, and for five gold rings, I was going to do bread rings. And so I asked my friend Charlotte uh, if uh, she knew any great recipes, and not only did she know great recipes, she spent an entire day with me baking all of the bread that is in the five golden ring uh, paintings and turned that into a baking lesson and an art lesson. So that was an amazing experience. Now, as I get further into the series, which is not finished, uh, the, the paintings are getting more like their own little world. They're taking on more of a story quality or kind of a fairy tale quality. And so to do that, I sometimes make little paper models of these uh, uh, fictional uh, places and light it because lighting is what gives the mood to a place. And I need to understand how these uh, uh, imaginary structures are going to respond. As I said before, you can tell I'm obsessed about food, and you can tell I'm obsessed about pattern. And I look for patterns in everything. Some of the patterns in the paintings I create on the computer, some of the patterns in the paintings I create by hand, but the pattern for Seven Swans was actually a tree grate, the grate that's around the bottom of a tree. So I'm constantly walking around with my camera going, oh my God, I've got I've to get that uh, in Prague. So that's a little bit of Prague in my Seven Swans painting. And then this painting, which is Eight Maids of Milking. 
I, I learned more from doing this painting than any other painting. The cow that is closest to you was not even part of a composition, but without it, I realized that the focal point was actually the rear end of a water buffalo. So <laughs> I had to change that. Then, one of the things that this series has taught me, and one of the ways that I work personally, is that the most important uh, part about painting is sitting and staring. And so you paint a little bit, then you stare for a long time. And one of the things that I do is at the end of each workday, I take a digital image of my work and look at it on the computer because you can see things. I can see things when I look at my painting on the computer screen that I don't immediately see when I actually look at the painting that I'm working on. And artists have done this. They look at their artwork in mirrors. They look at their artwork upside down. Now this one is, I'm also, I have a lot of obsessions. Maybe, maybe the previous speaker was right. I'm obsessed about apples. And this is 10 lords of leaping, but they're lord lamb born apples. And so I created a apple wassail, which is a song that you sing to apple trees. And they do this, this is a tradition in England. And you see the photograph of people at an apple wassail, which is, I think, primarily a drinking opportunity. <laughs> so you can see that the highlighted words are 10 Lords of Leaping. This is the 11th day. And this, I, when I create the images, I use tons and tons and tons of uh, uh, resource images. And it's not really researching. I, I call it resourcing. So there you can see some of the images that I used to create that painting, including my favorite image, which is uh, to create the illusion of the illuminated, the cake that's illuminated inside. It was actually a styrofoam cup and a flashlight. So that's it. And what's going to happen for the 12th day? I'm not telling. <laughs> But if you would like no cards or prints of, this is the shameless plug, if you'd like no cards or prints of any of the other days, you are welcome to visit my studio. Thank you.